Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Psyche Patshala, your study companion to learn psychology online. In this video, we will be discussing about the type of stress, the causes of stress and the symptoms of stress. If you like this video, then please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon and choose the all option. If you have any query, feedback and suggestion regarding psychology area, please write in the comment section. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Let's start today's topic. Now we will discuss about the types of stress. According to Hans Eli, the pioneer of stress researcher, stress are two types. One is eustress and another is distress. Eustress is a positive type of stress and distress is a negative types of stress. Eustress, the word you come from the Greek word which means good. The word you stress is coined by Hansel. You stress is the type of stress we experience right before we have the need to exert physical force. Recent studies tell us that you stress motivate us focuses energy, it lasts short term, our performance increases. For example, eustress is a kind of stress when we get married or when we joining our new company. Now we will discuss about the distress, that is the negative type of stress. This kind of negative stress we experience when our normal routine changes. For example, death of a spouse or losing a job. In this type of situation, we feel a negative stress that is called distress. Characteristics of distresses are increasing anxiety, decrease the performance level. It is a short term or long term basis. Now we will discuss about the two types of distress. One is acute and the other is chronic. When we experience distress for a short period of time, then it is called acute distress. And when it is last for longer period of time, then it is called chronic distress. Beside these two types of stress, there is also present hypostress and hyperstress. When the stress level is excessive, then it is called a hyperstress and when the stress level is very low or the stimulus is missing for us, then it is called hypostress. Now we will discuss about causes of stress. We classify the causes of stress into three sections. That's, that is physiological, psychological and environmental. Under the physiological causes of stress, there are three points are available. That is secretion of adrenaline and noradrenaline hormone from the adrenal medulla. Next, sympathetic activation of autonomic nervous system. Next is HPA axis activation, which is combination of nervous system and endocrine system of our body. The main hormone responsible for this is cortisol. Next, we discuss about the psychological causes of stress. Under this category, we have certain points that are conflict, frustration, pressure, aggression and uncontrollability. Conflict is a painful emotional state that results from two opposed or contradictory wishes. Next one is frustration. 
frustration is a emotional state which is results from blocking of our desire or need next one is pressure when the environmental demand is high then we will feel under pressure and this causes stress next one is aggression aggression is an action that causes harm and it is a reaction of frustration next one is uncontrollability when we feel unable to control our environmental demand it causes stress the next causes of stress is environmental cause the first causes of environmental stress is life event for example death in a family is a major life events that causes stress next point is hazards our daily life hazards is a environmental cause of stress that is stuck in traffic jam catastrophe means any unpredictable large scale destruction like earthquake tsunami fire etc this catastrophic event can cause stress till now we were discussing about the causes of stress now we will discuss about symptoms of stress we classify the symptoms of stress into four categories that is physiological emotional cognitive and behavior at first we discuss about the physiological symptoms under this category at first come pain that is headache or backache next point is dry mouth next point is gastric problem that is a stomach upset next point is heart problem that is increase of our heart rate or increase of our heartbeat next physiological symptom is diabetes and obesity next category of symptom is emotional stress can cause anxiety and depression next category is cognitive under this category stress causes lack of concentration memory loss and distorted or negative thinking next and last category is behavior stress can cause for substance abuse that is smoking and consumption of alcohol eating disorder are three types that is anorexia nervosa bulimia and binge eating disorder next point is nail biting it is an impulsive action beside this stress can affect our immune system and our performance level now we will discuss about stress and immune system how stress affect our immune system immune system is a collection of billion of cells immune system travel through our blood stream and move in and out of tissue and organ it leads to defeating the bacteria and viruses these cells are produced mostly from our spleen lymph node thymus and bone marrow the study of the psychological factor in the immune system is known as the psycho neuroimmunology in our blood stream white blood cells are present that is also called leukocyte it works as a immune system of our body white blood cell or leukocyte have three distinct type that is t cell b cell and natural killer cell t cell defeat the bacteria and viruses the t helper cell produce antibody to defeat the bacteria and viruses b cell b cell also produces antibodies and natural killer cell fight against virus and tumors of our body in normal function of our immune system the white blood cells leaves the blood vessels to fight against the virus and bacteria immune system sends signal to the hypothalamus 
which activate the HPA axis and HPA axis act release the cortisol hormone which stops the immune system. When the cortisol level decreases, the immune system release the WBC rapidly which fight against with the bacteria and virus. If the stress continues for a long period of time, cortisol stops the immune system. This is why chronic stress is bad for health. Now we will discuss stress and performance. Previously we discussed that you stress increases our performance level and this stress decreases our performance level. So we can say that performance and stress are related. We can see this relationship in this graph. We can see in this graph that when the stress level increases, our performance level increases to an optimum level. And when the stress level increases more, our performance level decreases. This law is known as Yerkes Dodson law. Now we will discuss hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis or HPA axis. When we perceive stress, then hypothalamus release CRF that is corticotrophin releasing factor which triggers anterior pituitary which secrete ACTH or adrenocorticotrophic hormone. This ACTH activate the adrenal cortex which release cortisol hormone. This cortisol hormone produce stress response. The major stress responses are storage of blood glucose in muscle which causes decrease of blood sugar level. Also heart rate decreases which causes low BP or low blood pressure. That is why when we feel stress for a long period of time, we feel fatigue, dizziness and weak. When cortisol level increases, it sends a negative feedback to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary to stop the CRF and ACTH release. This helps us in coping with the stress situation. If the cortisol level is too low, the cycle is activated again to maintain the optimum level of cortisol.